when we think about autoimmune diseases, um, we really categorize them into a couple of different areas. One is um, those that come with inflammatory arthritis. The most common one of these is rheumatoid arthritis, um, but also, also psoriatic arthritis can be an arthritis that comes with um, psoriasis, or ankylosing spondylitis, which is an inflammatory arthritis of the spine, can also be found in, in quite a few people. We also think separately about autoimmune diseases, things like lupus or Sjogren's or scleroderma that can affect the joints, but also really affect the internal organs. Um, and so those we sort of put in a somewhat different category of connective tissue diseases. And then there's another set of autoimmune diseases that really are very organ specific. And so only hit one organ of a patient's body. So for an example, um, thyroid disease is also often autoimmune or inflammatory bowel disease is autoimmune, but really primarily affects the gut. So many autoimmune diseases are challenging to manage because they are chronic diseases. We don't really have cures for any of them. So we don't have um, a medicine that we can give you that will just make the disease go away and stay away forever. Instead, what we do is we have medications that manage the symptoms. We try to keep the inflammation as calm as possible and therefore decreasing symptoms as much as possible. But that means that people with autoimmune diseases are often on lifelong medications. Many patients with autoimmune diseases can have other conditions that go either along with them or, or sort of part of their autoimmune disease or can just complicate the whole situation. So um, for example, we see um, diabetes and high blood pressure in our patients with autoimmune disease. And these patients are at higher risk for having heart disease like um, strokes and, and myocardial infarctions later on in life. We think that actually having the ongoing inflammation of an autoimmune disease compounds and worsens those risks for heart disease with patients with diabetes and high blood pressure. In addition, when we um, look at women specifically who have autoimmune diseases, particularly women who have rheumatoid arthritis, there appears to be an increase in infertility in this population. So women who um, have rheumatoid arthritis, it's been shown for many years, actually tend to have fewer children than women who don't have rheumatoid arthritis. And some of that is by choice, but a lot of that actually seems to be driven by um, the fact that they just have a hard time actually getting pregnant. In order to decrease the risk of having long-term consequences of comorbid disease as well as inflammatory arthritis, it's important to make some um, key lifestyle changes. For example, maintaining a healthy weight is really important. It can be really challenging when you have inflammatory arthritis and you can't exercise as much as other people. It can be hard if you're taking a lot of prednisone, which causes weight gain. So working hard to maintain a healthy weight is important. Um, increasing your exercise is also really important in order to keep your heart healthy, keep your bones healthy, um, that sort of thing. Also, that can be really challenging when you have inflammatory arthritis because it's not that every day you want to just go out and exercise. So really finding exercises that work for you, that work with your body, that can be adapted to make it so that, um, you know, if your wrists are bothering you, then the exercise that involves wrists is not for you. If you have a lot of knee problem, then Jogging is not going to be for you, but really finding the exercise that you can do um, regularly is really important for that. All of our patients are at high risk for having comorbid conditions when they have inflammatory arthritis. Um, it happens in men, it happens in women. Uh, we see it in everybody, and all of our patients really need to be conscious about the lifestyle choices they make, as well as making sure they're working with all their regular doctors or primary care physicians in order to control all the other conditions that can go along with inflammatory arthritis.